Hi, Angel here for MyNextTablet.com. Today with an unboxing of the brand new Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab. Let's get to it. Yeah, the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab is available in Germany right now where I bought it. And in this video, we want to unbox it and check it out in more detail. It should be available at least in the Western world um, very soon in the next couple of weeks if it's not available in your country already. And I'm not sure if it will be available worldwide because it seems like Lenovo is not releasing the smart tabs, uh, tablets with the Google Assistant built in, in every country. So yeah, you will just have to see if you are able to buy it. I paid 299 euros and I'm sure you will be able to get it at around 300 US dollars, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more depending where you're from. Well, you can see me unboxing it here already and yeah, we get the tablet inside the box first and it makes a pretty good first impression. It seems to be well built. And yeah, what else is inside the box? We've got the warranty card and quick start guide, of course. And then there's a USB-C to USB type A cable. So we've got a USB-C port, that's nice. And yeah, then we've got a standard charger and that's pretty much it. Nothing else is inside the box. All right, well, since I shot the first part of this video, about two days have passed already and I already did my battery test and a couple of benchmark tests and so on. So I have a little bit more to talk to you about this tablet. Well, this is a Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab. It's a 10.1 inch tablet and I really like this Lenovo Yoga tablet design. I've had um, pretty much every Lenovo Yoga tablet since a couple of years ago. I think the last one was released three years ago. I had the very first one. There was one with Windows as well. That was quite interesting. But yeah, this is the new, newest Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab. And let's check out the design first. And it has an IP rating to be a little bit water resistant. And um, it's mostly made out of plastic. At least these parts here are plastic, but it's um, yeah, kind of nice looking one. It certainly feels nice in your hands. Um, it's maybe a little bit softish, but yeah, it looks quite nice. I think the plastic part here. Then we've got a kind of metal grip here. Um, with this, you can hold it quite easily like a magazine. I think that's how Lenovo described it with the first yoga tablets at least. And you know, that if, if you have a magazine, like you know, fold it over a bit, then it kind of maybe looks like it. Anyway, you've got this grip here. It makes it nice to hold. This one is made out of metal and we've got a kickstand, which is made of metal as well. And if you want to pop it out, you press this button here and then you can uh, yeah, put out the kickstand and have it in several angles. You can also see that there's a hole inside the kickstand. And in fact, Lenovo says that you can hang it on a wall or maybe inside your kitchen, maybe on the fridge or something when you have those magnets things. Well, this is a tablet you can certainly hang if you want to. And it has a kickstand which um, you can use to just normally put it on a table like this and it's standing pretty vertically, that's nice. But you can also put it like this so that you've got it at an angle a bit and then you can actually use the on-screen keyboard easier when you're typing on a plane or in a train or something. That's actually quite useful. So you can hang it, you can put it like this, like this, or you can just put it like relatively flat on the table. Obviously you can't put it super flat on the table because we've got this grip thing here. It's not the lightest 10 inch tablet, it's 580 grams, which is okay, but not super light. And it's 8.5 millimeter thick. Um, at the thinnest point, obviously, this is 24 millimeters thick. So it obviously gets a bit thicker with this grip here. Um, yeah, get, let's get around the tablet a bit. On the side here, we've got a power button, volume rockers, a microphone. Then we've got a standard 3.5 mm headphone jack, a JBL speaker, which actually has a really good quality, especially the bass. It's a pretty good speaker. Then we've got the grip here. And on the back, integrated into the grip is the kickstand, as you've seen already. We've got an 8 megapixel webcam there, or just a normal camera, of course. And then we've got a micro SD card slot. And if you're getting the LTE version, I'm sure that's where you will put the SIM card as well. And then on the other side, we've got the USB-C port and the second JBL speaker. So there's stereo speakers and another microphone. 
They have far field microphones so that you can use the Google Assistant more easily. And I tried it when standing at the other side of the room and it works pretty well. On the top, there's another microphone. Then we've got a five megapixel webcam. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, the build quality is pretty good because of the metal grip and I like the plastic here too, but it does not feel as high end as an iPad Pro or so it does mainly because it's a bit thicker and so on. But actually I quite like the design here. We've got relatively thick bezels, of course, again, because of the grip and the bezels here are not super slim either, but I think it's totally fine for the price. Well, so much about the build quality. Let's get to its display. It has a 10.1 inch IPS screen and it has a um, full HD resolution with 1920 by 1200 pixels. And I always think that a full HD resolution on 10 inches is totally fine. And you can see here that text and icons, they certainly look sharp enough. So yeah, I really always think that full HD on 10 inches is all right. Viewing angles are really good too. And um, color reproduction is very good. You can change the color modes and the settings if you want. All that works pretty well. There's one little downside to the screen. It's only 320 nits in brightness. Um, to have a comparison, the iPads, pretty much all recent iPads are 500 nits in brightness. And I think the iPad Pro is 600 nits. But even the standard cheap 10.2 inch iPad, well, relatively cheap, is 500 nits and brightness. And compared to that, you can see that this is a bit darker screen. Um, it's obviously totally fine if you're using it inside, um, but if you're using it outside in the direct sunlight, the screen is um, too dark for that. So that's the only downside of the screen. There's one other issue that might be fixed with an up software update. I tried to watch Netflix and you can watch, you cannot watch it with HD resolution or full HD resolution. So yeah, it does not have a wideband level of L1. So yeah, maybe that will be fixed with an update. So yeah, you have to check um, the comments and other reviews if it will be able to play full HD videos on Netflix in the future. Inside the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab runs the Qualcomm Snapdragon 439 octa-core chipset together with three or four gigabytes of RAM and a 32 or 64 gigabyte of internal storage and you can also get it with LTE if you like, but it always depends on the market. I've got the version with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabyte of storage without LTE. That's the only version that's available in Germany right now. And I took a screenshot before I installed anything and out of the box, there are 10.77 gigabytes used by the system out of those 64 gigabytes that my version has. And I already ran a couple of benchmarks. You can see the results here. The Qualcomm, Qualcomm Snapdragon 439 is not the fastest. It's not the slowest either. Um, yeah, it's a mid-range chipset and that's what you can see in my benchmark comparison. So what's interesting to note is that it is faster than the Lenovo Tab M10 and Lenovo Tab P10. So it's faster than those, however, it's slower than the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.1 2019, which is around 100 euros or dollars cheaper. So if you're into gaming, then this is not the tablet for you, at least not if you want as much performance for your money as possible, then the Samsung one um, yeah, should be the better option. So yeah, this is not one of the highlights of this tablet. On the other hand, we get four gigabytes of RAM with the version I have, for example, for 300 euros, which obviously means that you will be able to do a little bit more multitasking. The Samsung one that you see in the benchmarks here, the Galaxy Tab A 10.1 only has two gigabytes of RAM. And usually you can see a difference um, of two gigabytes in real life when you switch between apps fast. Um, yeah, you can also see me here playing PUBG Mobile right now. It does run and it does run um, pretty smooth. There are some minor stutters. However, the graphics, they don't look amazing. I mean, as the benchmarks obviously would suggest, you cannot set the graphics to HD. You can only set them to balanced. And yeah, the graphics look pretty bad right now. I don't know if it ever will be a little bit better optimized maybe, but yeah, this is um, not a perfect gaming tablet as the benchmarks suggested as well, especially when you're looking at the performance to a price um, yeah, issue. Um, yeah, it's not the best regarding this. 
Okay, let's get to the software of the Lenovo Yoga Smart App. First of all, let's check out the version of Android it is running. It is running Android 9. Let's go to, no, there's a system update there, about tablet. Yeah, that's Android version 9. And let's see if we can have the animation here. Yeah, we do. And um, Lenovo is customizing Android 9 a bit more than they used to in the past. I'm not sure if I like it. First of all, out of the box, it pretty much looks like normal Android 9, as you would expect. However, there are some additional features. For example, there's this, um, I think Lenovo calls it the Lenovo Entertainment Center that is built into the home screen. And if you pull it out, it's basically just YouTube, but with a like, different layout and so on. It's not the YouTube app, it's something Lenovo built on their own. And you can log in with your Lenovo ID if you have one. Yeah, I don't like that it is integrated into the home screen out of the box. There's a kids mode, which might be nice for kids. There's also um, a yeah, little customization bar for the screen. For example, with this one, you can change the color mode to bright and um, yeah, you change the saturation basically. Now it's back to standard. You can take a screenshot with it. You can activate a reading mode, which is a blue light filter. You can record the screen and you can um, swipe this pen icon here to basically annotate the screen. You know, basically it takes a screenshot of the what you're seeing right now, then you can um, yeah, write on it either with your finger or with a pen for capacitive screens or so on. So yeah, it I'm not sure how I feel about it. I really like vanilla Android and yeah, some of the customizations here they could be useful for some, but I don't think this Lenovo Entertainment Center thing here is really useful. You can replace those um, buttons here with gestures. Um, there are not too many apps pre-installed, which is good. I obviously installed the benchmarks and the games. There's a Dolby Atmos app pre-installed and um, all the Google apps are pre-installed. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, nothing else. So no annoying ads or so are pre-installed. That's certainly a nice feature. Another nice feature is obviously the Google Assistant with its ambient mode. And um, to show you how it works, um, let me just turn off the screen and then pop out the kickstand here on the back. And when I do that, the Lenovo Assistant, uh, the Google Assistant ambient mode will be turned on. So let's do that. And there you see it says, good morning. I usually don't use um, the Google Assistant. I mean, now I will start to use it a bit more for testing. Um, so I don't have more information here right now, but now I can say, okay, Google, What's the weather in Berlin right now? And then it will tell me the weather. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow in Berlin, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 22 and a low of 13 degrees Celsius. Yeah, well, that's um, just a standard Google Assistant. You can get out by it. Um, I have to put in my pin, but let's see if we can use the facial recognition here. That's another feature. Now let's see how we can get it to work. Maybe it doesn't recognize my face right now, so I have to put in my pin. Um, this certainly is just a normal camera. I set it up for facial recognition. That's one of the other features. However, it does not work perfectly um, all of the times. And it's only like one standard camera. There's no extra sensor like with Apple's Face ID or with what Microsoft is doing on their Surface devices. So it's not the most secure facial recognition out there, just the standard basic one that we also see in a couple of cheaper Samsung devices, for example. Um, it worked pretty much always except right now, but as you can see, it does not work always, but um, yeah, not so secure as anyway. And one nice feature though that you should also know is there's tap to wake built in. Yeah, there you see. And um, I have it set to the Google Assistant ambient mode that it is turned on when it's turned off here. And also when it's charged, it changes to the ambient mode of the Google Assistant too. You can, you don't have to use it. You can um, turn it off in the settings. In fact, you have to turn it on in the settings first. All right, so much um, about the software. And um, yeah, check, let's check out the battery life. You can see it here right now. We've got a 7,000 milliamp battery in here and in my standard battery test, I got a runtime of 16 hours, which is a really um, good result. For this, I'm always looping an HD video at a medium brightness. Now, the screen is relatively dark. 
only 320 nits, which is fine for inside, but not great for outside. And that also means, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons that the battery life is pretty good because we don't have a super bright screen here. All right, um, so much about the Lenovo Yoga Smart Tab. I now have to really um, review it, really test it, install more games, use more games, and especially use the Google Assistant in more detail and yeah, play with it a bit more. I really like the design of the Lenovo Yoga tablets. I liked it since the very first one. Um, yeah, you've got an easy grip here. You've got an integrated kickstand, I would like that. I don't think I would ever hang it up somewhere, but I mean, you've got the possibility certainly to hang it up. And yeah, it's certainly an interesting design and I'm happy that Lenovo brought it back because the previous yoga tablets were getting pretty old, even though they still seem to sell them. At least in Germany, there were lots of deals, but they were just getting too old. Um, I wasn't recommending them anymore. But in the past, they've been pretty decent tablets, and this one seems to be as well. Obviously, it's not a gaming tablet. It's mostly for watching movies, watching YouTube, hopefully Netflix when they support 1080p. Um, but yeah, we will have to see how that plays out in the future. If you have any questions, please write me down below and check out mynexttablet.com. I'm reviewing pretty much every tablet that is released almost worldwide. And yeah, this one is next on the line. I'm NJ, thanks for watching and see you next time.